Bonsoir. It's... Uh, it's much better for you to read because my English doesn't exist. Okay? <laughs> I have to read the English, but this is the first time I read English in first public. For the last few years, we have witnessed a polemical retrospection on what is called, perhaps to simply call it, Persistent on tweet, and in particular, the radical critic that philosophers like Deleuze and Guattari, but also Foucault, developed towards psychoanalysis. In Italy, Lacanian, Lacanian psychanalysts enjoy a real success in the media by lamenting the society without father, the dissolution of the good old patriarchy caused by the vaporizing of the father. There is a desire for a renewal of family form or familiarisation, Foucault, which, are, which is argued by the French right without the rhetorical subtleties. subtleties of the Italian Lacanianism, which is more based on the left. The mobilisation, the mobilisation against the gay marriage in France demonstrates to us in a shocking and amusing way, the nostalgia for the Freudian family. What do they ask for but the Oedipal triangle of mommy, daddy, ch children, a prototype of the family that is taken prima face from the neurotic bourgeoisie of the 19th century? The danger is coming because his death certificate was established by anti Oedipo 40 years ago, which has now made its way, and what a long way it has been. As for me, far from confusing all the critics, I only use this conscience and the unconscious return to Freud or Lacan as a symptom of contemporary thought and action. Why had Deleuze Guattari, as much as Foucault, so violently attacked what the later called the Psi function? A mountain of misunderstanding has accumulated since the on Deleuze. What are the end of Foucault's position to our, to, to our psychanalysis, psychanalysis? Bernard does not escape this, since he reproached to Deleuze Guattari for the absence of distinction between drives and desire, while for them to operate this distinction would have been to make the mistake of modern West thought. This mistake would be opposed nature and culture. Culture. It, it would also need to pass from the one to the other via a transcendent mediation. Desire does not need any mediation, claims the Guattari, but does not mean that desire is a force that by itself will by it a whole universe. The working model of mediation built on the nature and culture opposition was first formulated in the manner that is, is still impossible to overcome by Hobbes' political philosophy. The state of nature is characterized, the na nature is characterized of the war of all against all. A mediation, a mediation is needed a sovereign, a state that makes possible the, pass the passage from nature to, cul to culture, from where war to peace, from savageness to civilization. The social science have been repeating this political model of mediation indef indefinitely in all domains, even in psychanalysis. The dominant conception of social order implies a definition of desire, of quality formation of desire, that is fairly disastrous, as a flow that has to be disciplined so that a law can be created to establish control of it. Desire seems to be something fuzzy, rather nebulous and disorganized, a kind of raw force that needs to pass through the meshes of the symbolic and of castration according to psychanalysis. It does not matter whether drive are directly referred to as instincts, instincts or whether they are def defined 
has been much more elaborate. In any of these cases, we always return to the same idea, necessarily th setting this raw world of design against the universe of social order, a universe of reason, judgment, ego, and so on. Eh, pour Guat pour Guattari, euh, utiliser entropie et nègre entropie, ça veut dire que la, pens la pensée est déjà piégée. Mais bon. For Guattari to use uh, entropy and negentropy, it means that thought is already uh, piégé, a trap, yeah. This model has been largely adopted, even by a revolutionary, in the same way that a supposedly undifferentiated economy of desire necessitates law, castration and languages to, stru to structure itself, Revolution would need a political party and its democratic centralism to organize, to organize, organize and discipline the anarchic spontaneity of subjectivities. In which case, this opposition, on the one hand, desired drive, desired disorder, desired death, desired aggression, and the other symbolic interaction, power centralized in state function, seems to me an utterly reactionary reference. This model works perfectly for Bernard, since it relates well to his conception of public power as an antidote to the pharmacon that capitalism had injected in society. While for me, in adapting Brodel's world, the state is inseparable from capital. It is constitutive of capital. Capitalism can only tri triumph when it identifies itself from the state, when it is the state. From a definition of desire as an immanent force of that recuse all mediation and that deploys it through a radical constitutivism, we will take take a few characteristics of this concept that seems, even today, to contain more possibility to be developed than critiques. The libido is not source of desire, since desire is the creation of the, po the new possible. This concept of desex desexualized desire opens a conception of subjectivity behind the division between a undifferentiated drive-based chaos and the, the differentiated symbolic order. Three in this new framework, drive is a social construction, a finished output, as Guattari would put it, and by no means a natural fact. Je continue à lire moi. C'est une case. Il comprend quelque chose? N'importe quoi. A bit faster, a bit faster, a bit faster. Bernard still needs sublimation since he considers desire to be expression of the libido, while the Guattari do away with the libido as much as sublimation. When the Guattari affirms that desire flows immediate, immediately without mediation in the sources, they mean that it does not need any sublimation to come into play. Desire is not expression of the libido the libido, but first and foremost, the, cre the creation of new possible. The capitalist deterioration function on desire in way that are not strictly speaking human, but machinic, since the assemblage of human and non-human flow lead to the emergence of the, a multiplicity of social and technical machine. Deterioration desire has nothing to with drives or even the conatus. Rather, it is assimilable to the possible. Desire as a point of proliferation of possible at the heart of, the, of a constituted system, as Guattari would say. That desire equal possible implies a revolutionary definition of desire. There is only an advent of desire when in the rupture of pre previous equilibriums, there appears a relation that were previously impossible. Desire can always be detected by the impossible 
that it opens and by the new possible then it's creates a desire that allows a process that secrets other system of reference desire should not be mistaken for phantasm dreams on representation but it is linked to production desire it is always a mode of production of whatever but not according to the marxist logic of work since production concerns first and foremost the possible. In claiming that desire is the creation of po new possible, Dresde Guattari practices desire desexualization. Sexuality does not have the role of an, an, an infrastructure. infrastructure in the assemblage of desire and where the subject would be the superstructure. Since sex sexuality is thought of as a flow among egg amongst other and not the source of desire in itself. Love and sexuality, instead of forming the foundation of the, the, the drive, onto which a substructal subjectivity take, take place, are only the means to the semiotization of the mutation of desire. desire. To put it differently, desire does not have a biological origin. It does not find in its origin in drives. It's not by nature, but always already artificial. It's never individual, but always collective. Always and for, always in and for an assemblage. And in an assemblage, not only one can't distinguish between nature and culture, and, but neither can one between nature and artifice. Desire is centered around individuals and does not result from the simple interaction of driver, individual, conatus, anti-subjectivity. Desire does not come from the inside of the subject. It is always born from the outside, from an encounter. encounter a coupling of or an assemblage. The classical conception of desire is abstract, since it is extract from the assemblage of desire, subject and supposedly desired object. Why we never desire the single someone or something, but always a person or a thing in assembly in in an assembly constituted of a multiplicity of object, relation, mach machine, humans and sign. It is the assemblage, not the individual subject, that makes someone or something, or something desirable. We never desire someone alone or something alone, but world and possible. Desire as possible does not need any mediation, any law that organize, organizes is, any superego that mine the logic of the state. Since they are not drive-based chaos, but emergence, beginnings, starting apps. It contains virtualities, but their actualization requires a constructivist work that is political, social and clinical. Desire does not need mediation, but an imminent process of construction. To Armstrong, the two Freudian topographies, Bernard seems to privil privil privilege, privilege, privilege the second one, while the Les Guattari appreciate the first one. But they also see in the second one a shrinking, shrinkage of Freud's thought. In the, primary, in the primary process of the first topography, the unconscious is still a teeming universe, a producer of a new meaning and phantasmatic script. It can be found in religion, art, childhood, ancient society. While in the, in the second topography, the logic of unconscious is dragged toward the kind of uh, undifferentiated matter, something that at the end of, Fra of Freud, uh, Freud's life was relative purely and simply to chaos, a driver, a disorder, reified in the form of a death drive. The primary process of the, the primary process of the first topography is that is, a, is that it as, 
a logic that is neither poor, poorer nor richer that, uh, than that of the secondary process, but simply different. It is from this heterogeneous logic of processes that the production of subjectivities happens. Instead of having a subjective turn between a drive-based chaos and a symbolic order, we have a process of subjectivation that produces itself in between these two realms. Instead of having a fractured subjectivity in a semiotic chaos and a linguistic order, we have a multiplicity, multiplicity of semiotics and converge in the same way toward subjectivation. Guattari, Guattari, in the last years of his life, often refers to Daniel Stern, the interpersonal world of the infant, infant, that in undoing the unity of the ego in a multiplicity of self, semiotics, relation, affects, and particularly pre-verbal affects, in it draw, draws, draws up a, a mode of subjectivation very far from Freudism. Before the, before the acquisition of language, infant construct actively the modality of perception, communication, experience of self and the world, and throw a nonverbal semiotization that is extremely rich and extremely differentiated, does not depend on any symbolic order, but possess in its own autonomy and own logic. It is impossible to think subjectivation as a passage from the indifferentiated to differenci differentiation, from the drives disorder to the order of the superego, from the semiotic chaos to the linguistic order. Stern distinguished three senses of self, the sense of an emergent self, the sense of core self, the sense of, the, of an anti-subjective self, which precedes the sense of verbal self. Sense of self does not mean concept of or knowledge of or awareness of, since these experiences do not pass through language, consciousness and representation. Between birth and the first two months of her life, the infant experiences the genesis the infant experiences the genesis of an emergent interpersonal link and what start called the sense of an emergent self. There are three main ways through which the infant makes the experience. Amodal experience, experience, categorial affect and affective of and affect of vitality. The infant possesses a great attitude to extract and organize the global and abstract character of what is happening to her. The intensity, the temporal figure, the rhythm, the movements are common element to every sensory modality and infant can easily identif identify them and after that transpose them from one sense to the, to the, to the other from the sight to the sense of touch, for example, or from the sense of touch to the sense of ear, hearing. The abstract and modal characters of what is happening are happening, happening. is happening are apprehended with the action of two different affects. The categorial the categorial affects that express anger astonishment, joy, sadness, etc., and affect of vitality, let us press changing state, threes old and of intensity and in the way of feeling. Dance, music, but also the duration of video and cinematography image are according to stern realities that manifest best this intensity and way of feeling. This subjective and global world where they are not subject, the, the, where they are not subject object division yet, where the ego and the other are indiscernible, where communication is done through contagion, this world is not remains, according to Stir and Guattari, the fundamental. This world is and remains, according to Stir and Guattari, the fundamental domain of human subjectivity. In acts outside conscious, consciousness, and it constitutes the matrix term, the existential seat 
of experience from which thought a per se form an identifiable acts and verbalized feeling will later arise. Finally, that we call chaos is the ultimate reservoir that can be dipped into for the all creative and artistic as experience. This global subjective world of emerging organization is and remains the fundamental domains of human subjectivity. It operates out of awareness and as the experiential matrix from which thought and perceived form are an identifiable act and the verbalized feeling will later arise. It also acts <coughs> The sense of a chorus. Je peux sauter. How can we enter into it? Je the fourth sense. Okay. Je ne sais pas si the four sense of self, the sense of verbal self inter interrogates the disjunction and the, the junction, the space between uh, the complementarity of the verbal part and the non-verbal part of subjectivity. Since the appearance of languages is at origin and the cleav cleavage between experience and its life and at its experience at as it is lived and as it is represented. While, on the other hand, linguistic signification makes our experience without other more shareable, and on the other hand, they can also lead us to make certain part of this same experience inaccessible by, to other, but also inaccessible to ourselves. The non-verbal and global part of experience can coexist with the part which has been converted into words. The verbal part is unleashed and developed in harmony with lived affective experience, but the latter can also be divided and be poorly rendered by language, which will force it to become subterranean. Languages is one of the modality of expression and not what is <coughs> what differentiated the undifferentiated. On the contrary, often in capitalism, languages reduce, simplify, operate a rough reduction of our experiences and their affective rhetorical wealth. According to Guattari, the different sense, sense of self that precede the sense of linguistic self are not in any way staged in the Freudian sense, which should be overcome for the realization of the ego, superego, and the order them. But they are, they are levels of subjectivation, non-verbal seeds and vector of sub subjectivation extremely rich and differentiated and they manifest themselves in parallel to speech and consciousness through life. Bernard has got has got an ironic image of linguistic mediation, while the institution of dominant languages as a system of domination, dominant signification is indispens indispensable to the formation of apparatus of or dispositive for power. It is first and foremost a political operation before being a linguistic a semantic operation. The constitution of the linguistic exchange and the constitution of distinct and individual speaker are coexistive. First, from the constitution of economy, exchange and juridical contract and is contracting part. Second, the psychic instance of the ego, super, id super ego, and the other, the two processes, linguistic, linguistic exchange, economic exchange, and the subjective in exchange are closely linked. A certain type of language and certain individuate mode of semiotization and subjectivation are necessary to stabilize the social file that is shattered by the capitalist deterioration which undoes all subjectivity, its form of life and modality of expression. This stabilization, this stabilization implies 
implies take control of a national language, conveying the laws and operating mode of capitalism that were born with dialectics of special language non and pathological artistic and children mode of expression. The national language pushes them to the margin by translating them from the tribunal of dominating syntaxes, semantics and pragmatics. The symbolics he worked on instituted by capitalism exactly like economy. Three and the last part. Foucault, Michel Foucault, Michel, Michel Foucault has shown us, in relation, in relation to Hobbes, how the mediation of the state invents the narrative of the state of nature to, nature to erase the conquest, the invasion, the civil war that are, that are the established force of the power. The contract should be replaced by this non avoidable origin of power. The fiction of psychanalysis operates in the same way. Its categories arise the origin of the political function uh, that enact drive, desire, the ego, and the superego. They naturalize, they, they naturalize the mediation and action, while the law, the castration, castration, the drive, are only the products of disciplinary dispositive of sovereign that couple the production of the subjectivity required for capitalist production. Desire is machined. Desire is always already machined, said Deleuze and Guattari. That is, it, it is constructed, it is produced, is never come spontaneously. Desire is not natural but artificial. Desire is always held and expressed in assemblage. That is by a multiplicity beyond the, bef the and before the subject and the object and their interrelation in 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 intersubjectivity. But in what sense can we say that desire is artifice or construction and is produced by a social machinism? Some brilliant page by Foucault explain with this to us. All, for the, all Freudian categories crown and problematize the work of nearly two centuries of constru construction of the restraint family, father, mother, children. Psychanalysis arrived at the end of the long process and is naturalized what has been cons constructed by power, knowledge, dispositive, and give them the le legitimacy of the new science. The main instrument of this long work of established the restrained family was the campaign against masturbation. In the first began in England, you see, look, around uh, <laughs> mid <mid-set. laughs> <laughs> with the publication of Onania, and the later in Germany and from uh, uh, in France. Foucault described the constitution of Freudian family, of the spread of this, its sexualization and ancestral desire according to different modality, whether it be a bourgeois fami family or proletarian one. By hunting down masturbation, body of the bourgeois family, parents and children, will be constructed by responding to the new productive and subjective function required by, new, by newly born capitalism. The campaign against onanism favored the elimination of all intermediaries, inter intermediaries. intermediaries, removal, if possible, this, of the servant, and the transformation of family, familiar space into one continuous surveillance. surveillance. The body of the child, child. Or the body of the child, needs to be the object of permanent attention by parents. The crusade. With all this practical instruction was a means of comprehensive family relationship and closing up the central parent-child rectangle into a substantial close night and emotional saturated unit. The transformation of a large family into a restrained nuclear cell, cell and conjugal family as we know it today was born with this process. Inside this new delimited family, the bodies 
of the parent are to be befold on those of the children. Apply your bodies to the bodies of your children. Observe your children. Get close to your children. Possibly get in bed with your children. Slide between their sheets. Observe, spy on, and surprise all the signs of your children's desire. Come stiltly, stiltly. stiltly to their bed at night. Lift up their sheet and see what they are doing. And put your hand there and at least to stop them. And now, after having been told this, uh, this for the 100, uh, 100 years, they are told this formidable desire you have uncovered in the material sense of the world is direct toward you. The most formidable thing about this desire is precisely that is concern you, concerns you. Much true. This interesting desire gant goes from the children to the parents, so that the later feel in control, feeling themselves to be the master not only of the body but also the desire of the child. In reality, this is a reappropriation of the child society by parents parallels to sub submission of the infantile body to the disciplinary dressage outside the family, increasingly intensifying the in the the 19th century, which allowed the capital to, and the state to become the owners of tame bodies, factory and war. The anti-masturbation anti crisis concerns almost exclusively the bourgeois family, since the proletarian had a different problem. A floating population with irregular behaviors which practice free unions, and that is precarious condition of existence, develop a kind of extramatrimonial extra extra sexuality. At the moment of the transformation of the European proletariat in the 19th century in productive force, condition of work and housing, mov movement of labor force, and the use of child labor, all made family relationship increasingly frag frag fragile, fragile, and disable the family structure. The multiply behaviors of proletarian raise many problems for disciplinary power, knowledge, dispositive. Their work needs to lead to the same results for the restrained family as well as the effective relation that go with it. The campaign of refamilization, which will take over the proletarian is then a campaign for marriage. Get married. Do not have children first only to abandon them later. The whole campaign is direct against the free unions, against concubinage, and against extra or parafamiliar fluidity. From uh, 1820, uh, 1820. Wow. onward, bosses, philanthropists, and public powers made a considerable effort to reconstitute the family. Inside the solid, continuous and space established by housing police, but also the promotion of savings shames and provide saving shames, which fix the, the flowing mobility of the proletarian beast, we, we find the development of, the, of yet another campaign. When we set the fold, the bourgeois bodies on to those they, their children, the injunction for the proletarians was not to mix body, to have the least possible contact with the body of children. There is a campaign against shared bedrooms, bedrooms, against parents and children, and children of different sex sharing the same bed. Ultimately, the ideal is one bed for, per person. The ideal is the workers' cities being planned, and this, this time is the well now small house with three rooms. A living room for all, a room for the parents, a room for the children, or even a room for the parents and a room for boys and a room for girls. Incest is always a, a, is, is incest is a, always a result and an instrument of this politics of family. But for the proletarian, incest implies a different injunction to save the children from promiscuity, to defend the children from this parent. The long work of training dressage of body and space will lead to interclassist family model that put the children the child at, at the center at the center 
that is the const that that is the ancestral desire, even though is carried out in two different ways. There have two been there have been two types of constitution of the cellular family, two types of definition of the incest, two des two description of the fear of incest, and two clusters of institution around this fear. I'm not saying that there are two sexuality, one bourgeois and the other proletarian or working class, but I would say that there, that there have been two mo modes of the sexualization of the family or two modes of familiarization of sexuality, two family space of sexuality as sexual prohibition. Every formation of power needs a new age, but thus, in parallel to the power that is extend on to the family, the family constitutes itself a medical psychiatric knowledge, does not depend solely on the family itself, but will not have any efficiencies without it. Psychiatry once owns this interlocking with judicial power to the problematic of the irresistible drive and the appearance of the sphere of instinctive mechanism and as a privileged domain of object. It owns, owns its symmetrical interlocking with familiar power. We take place along a different genealogic line to the different problems of sexuality and irregularity. This category are, are those that Freudian psychanalysis will recover at the end of the 19th century, and that, in a certain way, will bring them for, the, for their finality. Psychanalysis appears as the technique for dealing with infant, infant, infantile incest and all this disturbing effect in family space, while opening in another continent of subjectivity, subjectivity which was entirely unexplored until then. Guattari represents the similar argument when he affirmed that drive, desire and ego, etc., are construction of capitalism. The conception of desire is a flow that should be disciplined. I think that this conception of desire corresponds very well to a certain reality. It is a desire as it is constructed by and produced by integrate world capitalism. Psychanalysis, on the one hand, naturalize what it in reality a political construction, but also it constitutes one of the new age that compose the psi function. The psi function in a knowledge that function as power. If psychologists turn up in the school, the factory, in prison, in the army, and as elsewhere, it is because they entered precisely at the point when each of these institutions was obliged to make reality function as power, or again, when they had to assert the power exercised with them as reality. And this power of knowledge established itself as a reality in which the individual constitutes himself. To finish, to finish with a quotation from Freud that inscribed him in the history of transformation of psychiatric knowledges which paralleled with the disciplinary power and the pastoral power. The psychanalysis, psychanalysis is undoubtedly and undoubtedly his last incarnation. Without trying to reduce the work of Freud to this citation take from the future of illusion, and by recognizing that his work has opened on to discover of new subjective world, one should nonetheless recognize that his conception of society and culture rest in very disciplinary way, on the <coughs> compulsion to work and the renunciation of instinct. Men are not spontaneously formed on work, and that arguments are not are of no way against the patient. Civilization needs to impose a mediation that rassembles again and again the Leviathan and as an image that fragments as much as Leviathan did in this time for the enormous amount of coercion, coercion that will inevitably be required. 
It's just, it is just as impossible to do without control of the mass of a minority as it is, as it is no dispense with coercion in the work of civilization. For masses are la lazy and unintelligent, the, and the individual composing them support one another in giving free rein to their undisciplined. It is only through the influence of individuals who can set exam an example of whom must recognize as their leaders that they can be induced to perform the work and undergo the renunciation on, on which the existence of civilization depends. I think that instead of returning to Freud, we need to think and produce contemporary process of subjectivation and to start again from the distant thing that Passé 68 has produced. Voilà, merci. C'était très fatigant pour moi.